session. My name is uh, Nadine Manzi. I'm a senior technical specialist at uh, International Fund of Agricultural Development, IFAD. Um, I'm going to play the role of uh, moderator for this session. Um, uh, then uh, this session uh, topic is uh, financing a farmers' organization for uh, resilience and uh, is uh, organized with the uh, uh, Safin Network and uh, Apex Commodities. Um, the objective of this session uh, is to address the key challenges that uh, African uh, farmers' organizations uh, in food system face in accessing uh, finance for agricultural development. We all know that uh, uh, farmers' organizations are facing uh, uh, issues to access uh, to finance uh, because of uh, many, uh, uh, many uh, issues like uh, agricultural uh, sector uh, risk that increase uh, the, the demand uh, from investors or financial institutions or providing collaterals or providing uh, do financial documents. Uh, that's, uh, I don't name uh, everything now, but in the session you will be hearing about uh, uh, challenges, but we all know that uh, there are many. And uh, in this session, uh, we want to highlight the crucial need to enhance the resiliency against uh, ongoing crises like uh, the COVID-19. Uh, we know that it affected uh, the, the agricultural sector. We also have the Ukraine war. We have uh, the climate uh, change uh, effect that is uh, also uh, effect, uh, affecting the farmers' organization operations. Yeah. Uh, we also want to uh, particularly uh, talking about uh, uh, women and youth in uh, that sector. Yeah, they are part of the farmers' organization, but they are facing uh, more difficulties to access to finance. Then uh, the agenda is uh, as follows. We'll start with uh, a keynote uh, and opening remarks, uh, followed by uh, a framing presentation. Then uh, the panel uh, discussion uh, will uh, uh, last like uh, 35 minutes. After that, uh, there will be a, a Q&A uh, session. Uh, during the Q&A session, we'll uh, uh, encourage the audience to actively participate uh, by asking questions or uh, sharing the experience. Uh, because we are all here from different countries, we want to hear also from uh, different countries the experience, the different experience. Then at the end, we'll have a, a wrap-up uh, session and closing remarks. Then, uh, without uh, uh, further delay, uh, I'm welcoming my colleague, uh, Bernard Yen, who is uh, the uh, West Africa and uh, Central Africa Regional Director at IFAD. Please come and uh, provide the, the keynote and opening uh, remarks. Yeah, please join your hands too. Um, distinguished panelists, dear participants and colleagues, uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning. I didn't share you. Good morning. Good morning. Very good. So today, uh, we gather under the auspices of IFAD, the SAFIN, and the EFEX, the Commodities Exchange, to address a vital field, the financing of farmers' organization. I'm sure everyone in this room, whenever you travel to a country, a project, a village, meeting, 
with producers' organization, meeting with agribusinesses, I'm sure the top challenge they always put on the table to you is access to farmers. So let me start from there, from there, by commending the team that put together this very important session and also all the, uh, the panelists who accepted to join the session and to share their respective experiences. In a context marked by multiple mutually reinforcing crises, we experienced the COVID, the Ukraine crisis, we are seeing political instabilities adding to already existing you know, challenges, climate change and so on. With all of this, our mission in investing in sustainable rural development has never been more than relevant. You would agree with me. And collaborating with small-scale farmers and their organization to address the challenges faced by our rural producers and to deliver the promise of our sustainable development goals in rural areas of Africa is clearly the way to go. At IFAD, we actually consider that farmers' organizations are strategic partners, very strategic partners. Not only do farmers' organizations deliver services to their members, and they speak on behalf of their members, they sit around the policy, the discussion table to make a voice for their members, but also they are key actors in social and this you know, overall policy discussion at the country level, at the regional level, at the international level. They are pivotal in unlocking smallholder agricultural potential, enhancing productivity, and transforming farming practices. They achieve this by creating economies of scale, strengthening the bargaining power of their members, and steering the market integration. This empower, in the end, the small-scale farmers to flourish in a dynamic agri-food landscape. Our partnership with farmers' organizations aim to support them to evolve into stable, performing accountable organizations able to effectively represent their members and to provide them with economic services for profitable integration into markets and agricultural value chains. Facilitating access to finance is therefore an essential part of this effort and we are all of us we are gathering here for that to discuss it. Farmers' organization, she just mentioned it, Nadine just mentioned it, they face obstacles related to finance with challenges such as high interest rate. I'm sure this will come back during the discussion. And other difficulties in meeting collateral requirements. These issues were identified through surveys we conducted across 12 countries in West Africa, in Asia, and in the Pacific. Moreover, the most sought after financial product among farmers' organizations across all regions is the working capital loan, which is crucial for supporting ongoing operations. This demand has likely escalated due to the persistent crisis like climate change and the COVID-19 pandemic. Obtaining long-term funding also proved to be challenging for our organization, primarily due to the high risks associated with the sector. So as an international financing institution and a specialized agency of the United Nations, IFA, in IFA, we have instruments for financing farmer organizations which include our sovereign investment project, the grants, perhaps there are colleagues here dealing with the EU IFA, the finance grant that we call FO4AC, and also we use supplementary funds like you know the one we have for the GAFSP uh, dedicated to the producer organization, the producer organization window. 
and also special initiatives such as the rural poor stimulus facility that if has started during the COVID to address the impact of COVID, and also the private sector financing program. So these are instruments we are enrolling to actually address the challenges we are talking about. However, though we are working on the matter, we do acknowledge that more is needed to meet the diversity and demand of the farmers organization, particularly by the private sector. So my hope today uh, for our discussion is that we'll be able to highlight the key contribution of the private sector partnerships for financing the farmers organization, the role of new technology and digital solutions for unlocking the issues and enhancing actually the access to uh, uh, financing, and with this, let me stop here and wish to all of us a very fruitful discussion and we look forward to also going back to collecting your uh, recommendation, your action that will come out of this discussion. So thank you again for your participation. services to farmers or open up financial access to the farmers 
even when their prices are crowded in. So as equity bank, maybe I go through, and this is not just the equity bank, it is, a, it is the solution provided by financial institutions across the, uh, the continent. We are looking at developing the financial solution that are going to address the farmer need even now when they are faced by these challenges. And one of the uh, initiatives done by the bank is to develop a uh, financial solution that are smart, agriculture smart. For example, we are doing we are financing projects on the water reservoir consortium to take care of the uh, to take care of the water uh, users. Because as of now, we can see uh, climatic changes are, are causing rainfall to be a normal distributed. Like rainfall, which were expected to be uh, within three months, are now falls within two weeks. Now, we cannot be able to produce a, to let a farmer produce a crop to the end within two weeks. So, we need to finance them in the construction of water reservoir. We have also uh, finest in water irrigation equipment that takes care of use of the scarcity water so that they can be able to harvest at the end of the day. And the, we have also incorporated insurance uh, services within the, uh, the farming activities so that it can take care of the unexpected changes when it comes so that the farmers can be able to make payment at the end of the day. And also, uh, you understand that um, most of our farmers are, are in the areas where they are not accessible. So technological development is key to the financial institution to ensure services and um, services and loans, special loans, are well delivered to their locality. And maybe to summarize during COVID-19, it's been financial institution, we undergo several developments so that we can create rooms for our farmers for resilient financing so that they can continue uh, being in the farming activities and continue to receive income through their farming activities. And one of the areas which was hit, it was export of farming produce, where farmers did not receive their payment on, on time. And it's been, we had to refer the payment to the next period. And also we have uh, now required to develop some new technological development to create financial access so that they can have access of cash withdrawal, technological development in online banking, internet banking, so that they can get service where they are. And these are some of the opportunities that are brought by the pandemic where the financial institution uh, needed to come up and design solutions suitable to their farmer organization. And um, as bank also, we are working closely with the partners, partnerships in collaboration, because uh, as I said before, this sector is too huge for one institution to handle all the requirement of the sector. So we need collaborative corporations with the different stakeholders to address some of the challenges. We also need the government support, especially to complete maybe uh, international, uh, international or national fund to support the agriculture, especially the high cost of lending. As commercial banks or equity banks, we are also in business. We are not there as financial institution for grant or for support. We are doing business. So if we are doing business, we have to mobilize the deposit at sometimes at very high costs. So when we price to farmers, then it becomes very expensive. So if we have some cooperation with international development organization or the government that are supporting uh, the commercial bank, the private sector, we would have very uh, low lending rates to, the, to our farmers. We also look for uh, branded financing so that uh, I know you have done a lot, some of the international organizations have done a lot in creating awareness and um, in the capacity building. But all the capacity building that are done, if are not taken care, they will end up just in capacity building. So we need those capacity building to transform to the actionable, 
to transform to be the source of income for our people. So if the people have gone the transformation through capacity building, at the end of the day, we need to make them accessible. We need to make them access the loans. So we need the collaborations in terms of insurance, in terms of developing partners, in terms of credit guarantee fund to take care of the volatile so that at the end we can have uh, solutions for resilient uh, financing for our people. We also as bank, maybe as equity bank, we have developed some specific product which are special for women and youth. As my fellow said, this group is a special group where uh, they have more challenges than the normal, the other groups, the farming other group. So as bank, we have developed specific products for youth who are going through incubation process and they are at the end of the day they get financed and they are limited to find out, they are limited to the market. And we are doing a contractual farming so that we can create at least address the challenge of the market to the farmers. So we have got a contractual farming where all youth or women who are challenged by the collateral are now through the organization, farmer based organization, they are linked to the market or, or to the off takers who pays through the bank and we pay the loan and we pay with the balance. So I welcome you, dear um, delegates, to this session. We can unite together and see how we can move forward and address the most challenging, uh, most challenging situation to our farmers. Understanding that and addressing the challenge facing this sector will uh, indeed address the challenge facing a uh, large portion of our population and uh, we would be uh, fair to, to put forth the deserve the sector it requires. Thank you very much.
the questions for, for all. Um, then uh, the first question uh, is addressed to uh, Mr. Musa. Ladies, don't be uh, shocked. Today is not uh, <laughs> ladies first. <laughs> Today is the farmers organization first. Yeah. Uh, Musa, as a representative of a farmers organization, today is your day uh, in this session. Yeah. Uh, tell us um, the key challenges. Uh, I know uh, I mentioned some, and uh, my colleague Bernard also mentioned some. Can you uh, tell us uh, maybe what we didn't mention uh, and uh, showing your experience, your network with the African Air Force? Uh, I know you are based in uh, Eswatini, but you have uh, an experience in the region uh, regarding the uh, farmers' organization. Please let us know uh, what about the 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 challenges, the key challenges, but especially uh, for resilience to the ongoing uh, crisis. We have many crises, not only COVID, but uh, there's also the fuel uh, price that increases, affected the, the transport. Uh, and I know that farmers' organizations are really affected on that. Yeah, please, uh, uh, the floor is yours. You can use this uh, mic. You, uh, you only have five minutes. Good morning, ladies and gentlemen. Um, as introduced, um, thank you um, for all of us being here. As said that uh, I am representing here the former organizations and I am um, specifically in the area of cooperatives in farming. Um, being um, a chairman of uh, this sector in the African space, now it stretches um, uh, the, the parameters um, to not just focus in a specific area, but um, one thing that I've found to be um, common is these experiences and challenges, they just change faces, otherwise they're just almost uh, the same, going to the west, the north, central, south, and uh, I will just go to what we believe in, uh, in cooperatives is, you know, cooperatives is all about cooperation. Because what you cannot do alone when you come together, I think that's the reason we are here. So we can bring our minds together and also address these uh, certain issues. Because it's, it's many. We can only address a few given the, the time. Now, um, farm organizations, um, they face a myriad of, of challenges, which most of them are, are traditional by nature, um, which even, even the locations where the farming normally happens in the African space, it's normally in the rural areas. And uh, the main challenge there, it has been said, is the area of finance. Um, for us as, as, as farmers. Being a farmer myself, I know what uh, this thing does. Um, and I'm glad my friend here has just uh, also alluded to the fact that the financial institutions on the ground are business, are in business. And uh, obviously they cannot do this alone. They, they, they will just take a fair share uh, of what they can do, but leave it to, to others. Now let's go to what I've put to say, maybe in my space, what we consider, um, or what we have seen is, as farmers, we are considered, as we are considered by the financial institutions as risky borrowers. That is one thing that is effect on the farm. And uh, the, uh, area of bankability, uh, if we 
becomes a challenge too. As I have said, most of the smallholder farmers, they thrive in those rural areas where the resources are not, you know, that much ease to, ease to, be, to be accessed. Um, also, the size in which we do our business as smallholder farmers, it, it really affects us. Uh, because it is always uh, a, a challenge to, to put a group of people and when they are there, there are other uh, challenges that come. Being small in size, with the weather patterns uh, uh, changing over and over, uh, generally the, the management of these uh, organizations, it's, it's, it's not to the level where like if you are in towns, people run businesses in the run by professionals, we're talking about farmers, the level of education is not um, at the level where um, one would uh, actually desire it to be. And uh, you have said uh, that in the area uh, actually of high input costs, which the factors that have actually um, fit in to, um, you know, put more pressure in terms of the pricing. The war in Ukraine is one of the things where mostly the basic commodities in terms of fertilizers, um, it, it, it has that adverse effect when it comes to the sales of our produce, because then you find that you are working for almost uh, nothing. So these are, are the factors and, and others out there, like I said, I'm only which even then most of us know about these things. The, the, I think the main uh, thing here is how then, as uh, uh, Equity Bank was saying, how then do we, do we come out of this uh, so that we, 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 we try to ease the pressure on the farmers to, to walk this journey uh, in these hardships that they are in. So the, the areas of COVID-19, climate change, and this war, and uh, you know, we are in the African space. Uh, these wars that keep on erupting, like taking for, the, uh, for instance, what is happening in the Central Africa, these are the things that whatever effort that has been there, uh, you find you walk, you take one step forward and it, you, you, these uh, circumstances or instances, they take you 10 steps back, you still need to come back again, and hence, uh, the assistance uh, is needed in many areas. Now, the areas of uh, interest rates, uh, she has said it, but then what is important is um, how do we then help uh, our smallholder farmers uh, to, to, to work? These issues, um, you know, we need to find uh, ways of how to uh, mitigate these areas um, in terms of engaging our financing uh, partners to, uh, to, or other people to mitigate or rather cushion uh, this uh, interest rate. Because these uh, rates, they control much when it comes to the returns that we as farmers expect uh, to be getting. The, the loans, if we get them from these commercial banks, it becomes very hard to um, uh, to, to pay back and uh, the pricing then becomes high when it comes to the, the, farmer, the farmer produce and it becomes hard even to sell when, when, when it like that. Everything now shoots the price high uh, because maybe uh, one has uh, received or rather a secured funding from, uh, uh, from the commercial bank. The issue of uh, health is one of the areas which our governments, due to the COVID-19, they decided to, you know, focus more into the health of the citizens. And then now, uh, when it comes to the issue of assisting the farmers on the ground, uh, COVID-19 just came unexpected and all that. So it, it, it necessitated that governments redirect most of the uh, of the uh, securities they were given to the farmers now to focus on, on the areas of health which was more important. So, so the issue of energy because of the climate change, this, this, the list is endless when it comes to this, um, where you find that the farmers 
are already competing for the um, for the already you know very much constrained government coffers and then now we need uh, uh, partners to come on board to, to assist the farmers. I think for now let me just end here uh, with more as we well. continue. Thank you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Musa. Um, thank you for listing the, the issues that are facing the uh, efforts, the farmers' organization. And uh, we can uh, really uh, suggest a, a strong, a strong uh, support from uh, uh, governments to work on that and the private sector. Then uh, here I have uh, some ladies from the, the private sector. Yeah. Uh, Tabita from uh, FX. I know you are close to, to the farmers organization. You know all the issues. It's Maybe you know, some few uh, you didn't know, but uh, as you are working with them closely, let us know uh, what what uh, did you do uh, to to support a farmers' organization, especially uh, during this uh, holy crisis. Yeah, even new crisis in uh, West Africa. What are you doing? Um, thank you for the question. Um, I'll pick up from where my fellow, fellow panelists uh, finished off. I think one of the main challenges we see the, the farm organizations facing is financing that is not suited to the farming calendar. Um, apologies to the bank, but if a farm organization or a farmer goes to apply for a loan and you take three weeks to do KYC, um, the rain doesn't wait for anybody. Where we are based, we do hybrid highland maize farming, and that's nine months of the crop in the field. So if the farmer misses two weeks, then they have missed an entire year, and they will have to wait until another another year, and that's loss of income. So how, what we do at Apex, we develop financing solutions that are suited to the farming calendar based on the crop. So for maize, the farmer just comes, um, farmer organizations, so the farmer has to be part of a farmer organization, and that's a cooperative, a union, a farmer-based organization. And then they can access input financing by just paying a 15% deposit of the total cost of their production. And that covers planting fertilizer, top dressing, the chemicals, and there's also an aspect of insurance that's included in that financing. And the farmer doesn't have to pay anything when the crop is in the field. They will only pay at harvest. So create solutions that are farmer-led. Create solutions that address what the farmer needs. When it comes to cocoa, when it comes to paddy rice, when it comes to coffee, are you responding to what the farmer actually needs? The second aspect of that is we create a digital identity for the farmers. Data is very important. I think all of us in the room know that. So by creating a digital identity for the farmer, when they come to us, we register them, um, we open our wallet for them. In Kenya, we have M-Pesa, so we trade most, we in, uh, transact through M-Pesa. We are operational in Kenya, Uganda, and Nigeria. In countries like Nigeria, where we do not have M-Pesa, we create our own solution. We've created one called Kudi. Um, it's been operational for two months now, and already onboarded 300,000 farmers. And what this does is it gives the farmers a credit history. So financial inclusion is also very important. It gives the farmers a credit history. And they can use those investor statements as an organization, as a group, to as collateral or as a, you know, um, to show that we have transacted with Apex, we obtained a loan, we paid for it. It gives them sort of a bargaining power. And I know the question is going to be, okay, you've given these farmers a loan, they do not have collateral, there's no security, is it their risk of default? By being uh, in a group, there's accountability. And if there's any default by one member, then the whole group does not access financing in the next season. And smallholder farmers, they are the best payers because they know they will need you the next season. And again, because they have so many competing needs, 
for their uh, money. In the nine months for the crop I just talked about, they still need to pay for labor, they still need to pay for plowing, they still have school fees, they still have like, uh, household expenses to cater for. Um, by embedding insurance into, our, into the financing provided to the farmers and getting to mitigate against the, the risk of climate change. Um, again, um, financing, most times we focus on production, but we forget about the market. When the farmer produces, then what about the market? They need to sell their produce. So, factor in storage, again, to solve for post-harvest um, losses. Because again, we lose a lot, a big percentage of the harvest is lost, again, for the farm organizations. Uh, providing storage facilities, and um, this also ties in with the warehouse receipting system, where a farmer can come, store their goods in the warehouse, obtain a receipt that they can also use to trade. Um, and the other aspect of that is the market, creating a market linkage. I'm sure that is also something that you experience with your, with your farmers. Creating a market linkage for these farmers. Um, at Apex, we, we do that. You can see we are a commodity exchange. So in Nigeria, we have a fully functional commodity exchange. And we actually have um, a digital uh, tool called Comex, where the farmers can, can trade, the buyers can match with the farmers, and they can do the transaction without even having a middleman. So just to summarize, it's creating solutions that are farmer-oriented, that address the, 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 the needs of the farmers. Um, my good friend Esther here of Haifa International, even when we talk about financing from non-government organizations, the, the, the barriers to entry are, are also there because you have to fill an application form, you have to go uh, through a funding window, and sometimes that, the turnaround for that, it takes time. So how do we also work together with the people that are represented in this room to sort of craft structures and responses that address these farmer needs and they get their financing and they don't miss the rain and they don't miss the season and we don't miss food again, food security. Thank you. Yeah, thank you so much, um, Tabita. I'm very surprised that you have uh, uh, such uh, a big number of <laughs> services you are offering. You should connect with Musa <laughs> and start cooperating with uh, Isodini. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, I'm so I'm so uh, uh, proud of FX uh, for doing that. Uh, I'm a bit uh, scared uh, about uh, the banking sector because <laughs> the service providers are more close to the farmers. Uh, they are trying to look for a solution. Now I'm back to you. <laughs> uh, can you tell us, um, you, you told us the list of uh, um, a solution you provided during the crisis. But me, I want to ask to, to focus uh, on interest, high interest rates and collateral. How do you, uh, not only equity bank, but like the, in the financial sector, how uh, do you help the farmers organization to, 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 to go through uh, this uh, high interest rate and uh, lack of uh, collateral? Is there uh, some specific uh, products you provide to, to them or a uh, group, small group of uh, farmers, especially women, youth? What, what, uh, what is the special thing you can uh, tell us so that we are not scared that uh, the, the service providers will take uh, all the market? Thank you, Nadine. Uh, maybe to start with from where my colleague ended, uh, we are not very far from the farmers. We are, of course, uh, we have social engine part of uh, the bank that takes care of the social requirement. 
We are also going through some training, we are also doing some research to find out what the customer exactly need from the commercial part of uh, financial services. The thing um, I said before is that the banking environment is highly regulated. And some of the things we are doing, we are not doing because we want to make things difficult to the farmers to access financial services. It is just because it is the rule that if we want to take a loan, to grant a loan to some of the farmers, they need to be in some specific or prescribed condition. But we are not saying because of the rule, we are not moving forward to the farmer organization. As a bank, we have come up with the, some of the, the modules of which we think they are really addressing the challenges that are facing our communities, especially the collateral requirement. When we look on the financial or the agriculture sector uh, from the bank's perspective, we assess it on its style from end to end. We assess on the value chain. We may not be making money in the, uh, the small farmers' produce, but we will make money somewhere in between. So when we are offering solutions, we look at the value chain. For example, if we are looking on rice production, we are going to provide solutions, look for the solution for small border farmers, or for the farming groups uh, in irrigation schemes, or even the rain fed. We are looking what exactly the services do they require. So we are working with uh, other institutions like input supply companies to ensure we deliver the inputs at, to farmers, which are also sometimes uh, they bring in, they, give, they take into consideration the insurance issue and the volatile. And during that period, we are also linking these farmers to the off-taker. So we already identify and we sometimes we send the contract to identify who will be the off-taker of these products. By, by doing so, uh, most of the challenges on the collateral and the ability to pay by farmers are taken care of by that way. So we are doing it for, it is easy to provide service to farmers who are good than farmers in a solution. It is very difficult if we want to address the challenges according to the, the regulations to a single farmer. But we can do it when the farmers are in groups. Where I encourage uh, farmers to be in groups, to be uh, in a cooperative like the agricultural marketing societies, to be in circles, the credit and uh, savings society, so that when they are in a group, they have the personal commitment to each other to ensure they make a sales. They make sales and pay the loan at the end of the day. So, uh, value chain financing addressing most of the challenges that are facing the smallholder farmers. For example, if we are looking at the value chain for cashonet, we will look at the smallholder producers also, we will look at the processors, the aggregators, the transporters. So at the end of the day, the, the risky part of agriculture is the smallholder farmers, is the primary producers, that are the, the risky part. But when the produce is red, it is easy, because if someone comes for aggregation, you already know the harvest. So it will not be uh, risky as it used to be before. So the issue of interest rate, again, uh, maybe I call upon uh, branded financing that can assist the commercial banks to come up, to come down their, to bring down the interest rates. Uh, for example, I know most of the commercial banks, if we are getting a deposit at 10%, there is no way you can take that deposit at 5% to the farmers. Because we need to pay the deposit at 10%. And we need to, make, uh, to pay some operations costs. So if the government will come in, like uh, they have development fund, are sitting in the commercial banks, and the bank uh, have the capital with, where they can mix, we can sit down and have very uh, affordable interest rate to farmers. But under normal circumstances, if we are getting interest rate at 10, it is not possible to go down and uh, get it at, um, at lower rate. And I understand even the farmers, 
when they say they are not used, they take into, into account the cost involved. So uh, sometimes they sell below the cost because of lack of market, which is also the challenge for the farmers. Uh, as commercial bank, we are also addressing such part of market so that at the beginning we, understand, we really understand and know where the produce will be taken uh, and if the price offered will be able to, to cover the cost of lending and will encourage the farmer to continue doing farming activities. Because at the, at the end of the day, we need to understand uh, farming should be perceived as a source of income to the farmer, a source of wealth. If it is bringing uh, additional fund to the farmers, it will encourage them. Then at the end of the day, as a country, we will have a, a, a reliable system to food security and we will be able to produce enough for our own country and be able to export for outside market. Thank you. why uh, high interest uh, rate is applied it's because of the cost of land and we need a lot of advocacy with the government to see if uh, uh, the cost of pound can go down so that they can be able also to uh, lower the interest rate yeah thank you uh, next question um, just quickly uh, each of you um, uh, one example, one solution or methodology uh, that uh, actually work with the uh, farmers' organization uh, for resiliency during uh, uh, this uh, ongoing crisis. Uh, in addition, you can also mention uh, if there's uh, any development or tool, technology uh, uh, that you give particularly to financial institution, uh, financial, uh, farmers organization, sorry, uh, uh, to increase their resilience. Who is going to start? Yeah. Then we'll be followed by uh, Musa. Musa, I know you talked about challenges, challenges, but I know there's some solution, there's some best practice if you can give us one that you can give us. Thank you. Over yeah. to you. I like that we are focusing on solutions. So, Tokora mentioned that banks are businesses and you know they're there to make profits. So why don't we treat farm organizations as businesses? So for us, we, we have a model called the agri-service providers. FX can only go so far. Um, but we already have existing farm organizations that have structures in place but they do not have technology, they don't have the working capital. So we go to them, we identify them, we onboard them onto our system, we provide them with the technology, um, we have a system called Workbench that they can use for farm management. We give them the working capital, um, again like I mentioned, suited to the farming calendar. And then these ASPs, if we have 100 ASPs, the agri-service providers, it's like a franchise model, then it's, it's easy to replicate because then each can reach more farmers and they already have existing farmers. It's um, the unit cost for Apex or for any organization to go into those communities and start something from the ground up is extremely high. But if we work with what is already on the ground, so where we do not need to reinvent the wheel, Let's look for what's already existing and build on that. Um, and this also includes uh, capacity building. I know we talk about capacity building all the time, but extension services are very important. A big problem we have with the farm organizations is the continuity, because they are member-led, so the management keeps changing. And how do we build sustainability into the management that is this year, if they are not there next year, there are still structures and systems that are in place that will not disrupt business when a new group of people gets into leadership. So that's part of uh, what we offer to, to these farm organizations. Thank you. Thank you, Tabitha. Yeah. 
Thank you once again. Um, I think on my on my end, when it comes to um, the, the solutions, yes, the other time I was talking the other way, and now I'm coming back home to say where can we suggest uh, farming? It has been said many times; it's the backbone of these African uh, uh, countries' economies. But um, I think the, what is more important is that we come together to develop policies that will inform uh, some certain strategies um, to l try and level the ground uh, for farmer organizations to, to thrive and do farming as a business, as it has been said. Um, one of the things that um, I did in my country was, or rather we did in our country, in Eswatini, to, it was to partner with the, with the ITC to come up with some building blocks that will address not just the farming in the field, but also uh, looking into the whole value chain and who is needed where to ensure uh, part of this whole thing is about to create the residence in the in the in the uh, in this farming activity. So the the, the ITC came in and uh, we we went uh, we entered into uh, an agreement that for them is to set up the structures where the farmers needed some technical training because there was no money. Uh, the farmers normally they don't have that money. Uh, to spend in this expensive um, expertise costed by these consultants and all that. So you need someone someone to come and, and pick you up on that. So they came in and uh, addressed all these areas. What do we need at, at planting? What do we need at this level? What do we need? And also, we, we even talked to the management um, of, of, of the activity itself. Because having uh, people who don't even understand what business is all about, you, you know, and try to address these areas with a business mind rather than just moaning about what is happening. So, but I feel having done that, we, we, we also needed the government support because government institutions were aligned towards addressing specific areas that were very much uh, a challenge to the, to the farm. So by so doing, each area we had to put some certain structures to ensure that they will continue to monitor the challenges that are there and also put, um, you know, some recommendations time and again to say we need to improve, this is how far we have gone. So I believe these are things where we need people or we need partnerships that will, will, will come and we set up policies that I, let me make an example. Some of the countries, they say, if like uh, a, a company is coming to invest in a certain sector, like the insurance is in our country, they tell you if you, you have to invest uh, a certain amount of money, they want a certain percentage of that money uh, secured in a certain activity in the country, not just you, you yourself looking at whatever you are doing. So we, we need policies that will compel some joint ventures with the big uh, uh, multinational, transnational uh, players to ensure that they do the enrolling because they already have the expertise within their operation to try and assist the farmers uh, to, to go. And by so doing, in our space, we have, we have managed to turn around even the perception that agriculture should not be just, you know, we, we do this as a business. And I believe this is what we need, that we, we put our thoughts together and we try to come up and also encourage the government to, to not just talk about agriculture as a backbone, but let this be also influenced about the budgets. The, 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 there should be budgets dedicated to assisting where you find in some other space, places, uh, there is too little that is allocated to the agricultural uh, Activity. So I think those are the things where we need to commit in a more meaningful way to work together and improve 
uh, the farm of organizations uh, to be more resilient on the ground because I think that is what we will be able to do. Thank you, Mr. Your the change of mindset. Uh, most of our farmers, uh, our community, they tend to relax and perceive that they want to receive like grants. They want financing in terms of grants. So even though we go there and educate and have some sessions for capacity building, at the end of the day they perceive financing as grants. So they are not required to pay back. So the only thing to add and take, take there we need to make sure that our people understand that uh, agriculture is business, family is business. So at the end of the day, they have to incur some costs and pay for the costs they have incurred. They do not uh, expect someone to come and change their life. They do not expect if they want to invest and change something, that will come to them as a grant. That mindset between our people needs to be changed. This is because uh, we are experiencing some difficulties in the loan repayment because uh, people are taking loans as grants because they have been receiving some grants from uh, some institution so they think also uh, we are also giving the grants so that mindset will be changed. Thank you. Thank you, Teofora. Yeah, well noted. Uh, address to Ifad. She said that we are providing a lot of grants that is spoiling the, <laughs> the market. Yeah, this is well noted. Um, then uh, the last question, um, you'll have uh, one minute just to answer it, uh, uh, to answer it. but it is addressed to FX and uh, Equity Bank. Uh, it's regarding the fa farmer's organization. Uh, what are the key characteristics or institutional capabilities that uh, facilitate uh, uh, farmers' organization to receive finance or criteria? Then, uh, uh, does resiliency feature as one of uh, those characteristics? One minute. Therefore, Thank you. Uh, the question requires me to state the characteristics of uh, the farm organization or the uh, criteria we are using as commercial banks to grant the loans. Uh, maybe for now, the, we are deeply looking on financing on the agriculture which assists on projects that takes care of the environment. And we have as commercial banks signed the green financing, which uh, addresses the impact of the right use of resources we have and irrigation, irrigation equipment and smart agriculture in general, so that we can have a resilient agriculture, especially now when the impact of climate changes are higher than before. Thank you. Characteristic, okay, uh, let me give some examples, uh, like, uh, do you consider, for example, the strong uh, governance, uh, leadership, uh, financial document, what, what are the, the characteristics that push, uh, for example, equity to provide financing to the families? Yeah. Leadership is one of uh, the experience of the leadership for how long they have been in leadership is one of the, the area we are looking at. When the financial, when the farm organization keep on changing the leaders from now to then, then it poses a risk to the bank. So we are also considering the good uh, governance of the group as one of the criteria for giving out the loans.
but some of them are dormant. Uh, the membership is is not active. So we look out for the area in some countries like Kenya, the cooperative movement is very strong. In other countries like Nigeria or Uganda, we have to go and sort of do the, the groundwork ourselves uh, with our network of field extension officers and bring the farmers into a group and they create a cooperative. So, but governance is very important. Again, we are dealing with money. So at the end of the day, there has to be accountability. But then that becomes part of the technical assistance for to build the capacity of these organizations. Like I mentioned, you need, um, this is a business. And the thing that keeps businesses going is the going concern aspect of it, that it will exist three years down the line to give comfort to the banks to finance them. Um, they need to be on the operation for three years so that they can finally have financials that they can present to to um, banks and other institutions for funding. So building their capacity, KYC, that's uh, due diligence, increasing that, but also helping them to um, have systems where they're not failing at KYC and it doesn't take one month for them to provide the requisite documentation. But at the end of the day, the primary aspect is at the farmers. Thank you so much. Uh, um, now um, I'm going to give the floor to the participant. Yeah, um, I see uh, many questions. Uh, please ask your question uh, and uh, be specific to who uh, you want uh, to, to, to be addressed. Then uh, uh, also share your experience. Maybe I need some help. Thank you. Thank you very much. My name is Sebastian Kingu. I'm a Tanzanian. I have a background of investment consultant for about 30 years. The, the African farmer, in fact, I have a comment, not a question. The African farmer has been at a mess for too long. And whatever we are, we are talking here has nothing to do with the African farmer. It is high time. We have a model. We are trying to look for partners like African Development Bank and other um, uh, development partners. We have, this is the time has come. The farmers have to own the processing mechanism. They have to own the industries. There is, the, the, the agriculture for raw commodities will not take our farmers anywhere. So that era is gone. We need a new approach. We, this model is there. So um, what we are doing uh, here, I beg our panelists, we are trying to promote the agriculture that is selling raw commodities to the world, which is, will not take Africa anywhere. Thank you very much. My name is Martin Manuma. I'm the chair of Tanzania Organic Agriculture Movement. My question is to Gilbert. How much they put in, um, how strong in their system of looking which group of farm organization are they supporting? Because you could see other farm organization which are touching the people down there are completely marginalized. And I agree with my brother. This is the comment now. The question is finished. And I agree with my brother. This is for a certain group of the farmers. This, you are going to put farmers, smallholder farmers into more debt, into more suffering. There is a way that we can do it much better. A way of supporting them to have these resources that they are needed to improve their farming within their own areas, within their own vicinities. Stop pushing them into becoming modern, into taking the technologies and issues outside their concepts, outside their understanding. 
We have been going on through this for a long time. Now is the time. There are a lot of young people here. They are making biofesticides. They are making biofertilizers. Support them with that kind of a soft loan to develop more, and that will be accessible to the farmers. And let the farmers be feeding their community first to start with. Let the schools, let the hospitals be buying the food from the farmers in the community and that is where we will push them up to a certain level. Stop pushing them into debts. Stop telling them that there is a way you can get money and then if the rain does not fall, irrigation fails and then there is no crop and they still have to pay for that loan. Please, please, please. We have seen it all through. We have to change. And I believe this discussion in this other, it will look into the different direction. It should not come in in a different covering, sugar coating, farm and excessive financing. Let's give them money. Let's give them insurance. Let's give them money. Yeah. yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's have like uh, uh, two other questions and uh, response. Thank you so much. My name is Rufus English uh, with Hacker International. Uh, thanks so much to the moderator and the panelists and also the, the very good comments we're getting. My question is actually going to go to both the bank and Apex. So on the bank side, you talk about the high cost of fund in the wide interest rate is high and also the banking sector is highly regulated and the banks. So at that point, there was going to be more innovative in getting funding from like government partners into the bank to help you reduce the cost of funds so at least you can blend that with the new goals in the interest rate of some other funds. And it's also the bank willing to be more back in the way, in such a way that you can reduce the cost of managing your loans, the cost of growing, managing and recovery, be more innovative, as again the traditional method of using so much growth that you can make the cost of managing the money so very, very high. On the effect side, I'm thinking, do you think the issue is mainly big on the side of interest rate? Or is it because the farmer on one hectare of land, for instance, for rice in Nigeria, is getting only two hectares? and say he get a loan for 15%. If that farmer get six, six tons per hectare and still get the loan at 15% interest rate, would that be a better farmer that makes more money? Will the interest rate be the issue at that point? Or is it about increasing productivity and yield for small farmers to, to balance up? To, 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 because it comes to start the loan in the bank forever. You understand what I mean? So I'm thinking, what you balance? Thank you. Hi, can I, can I go with my question? Hi, thanks. Uh, my name is Jonathan Atkinson. I'm the General Manager of the Meridian Farm Services Unit. Um, this is a really interesting topic. For the last two years, we've been piloting a study with Opportunity International. And again, I, I want to echo some of the sentiments that have been said, but I, I also want to encourage the concept of this group dynamic and shared liability paradigm. It doesn't exist. It doesn't exist on the ground. Uh, and I, I mean, I, I stand to reason, but I've been in farming for many years. I, I highly doubt there's even a commercial operation that aims to share liability. And so this notion of bringing people together was a very, very, again, it, it had a fit for purpose in a particular period of time. But now when it deals with finance, this idea of bringing people together under one banner of shared liability and shared responsibility and shared benefit does not exist because you have a problem with defaulting. And when you cluster something together, the question is, is who's the defaulting liability stop at? The cluster or the group or the individual? Now it's well known that banking institutions prefer to cluster people for administrative purposes. However, you very quickly dissect them when it comes to liability. And I think that must be, again, something that must be done away with. The other, the other second point on the point I can, and I'll leave on this is that in the context of Malawi, Mozambique, Kenya and Tanzania are almost equivalent to the Western world. Point of sale, digital agriculture, digital banking, these are terms that are still foreign. So the simple concept of even returning money to people who have paid you on time, just that simple notion, if you've paid a collateral and you've honored your loan and you don't want to be part of a scheme because you've become sustainable or you've restored your livelihood to the point where you don't need finance, there isn't even a mechanism from the bank to return money to people. So I think you look at that whole value chain and, and the work you're doing is fantastic, but I think again, there are economies of scale and particular models that cannot be cut and paste across different regions. Thanks. All right, thank you very much. My name is
child from young guy work with her father. I have a question I have recommend. I want to applaud the lady from uh, from Apex for the innovative work that you are doing. And I, and I would like to encourage everyone, just like our our brother and our, our mother there commented, more or less like looking at it from the other side of the coin. It is expected when you are discussing this should have to do with So nobody should take it personal. It is very much expected. My question for you uh, for for Apex is that can you tell us how do you get the source of funding for funding the credit scheme is all that And I know probably you get from multiple sources. Can you give us an idea of if do you get more grants or do you get more loan? And how do you say that? That's why. Then my recommendation to your organizer, you can see the comment that is coming from from the congregation. Then for issues like this, I expect to see smaller farmers sitting there to tell us what are the issues. I don't know why it's there. Who says you are smaller farmers? We need to hear from the smaller farmers. What are the people who want to next? Because if we don't hear from them directly, we will not be able to come up with innovative solutions. So my recommendation is that for, for discussions like this, at least two smaller farmers, they may have a few issues in there. So that we are here for Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank matching grants, but they have to, uh, to, to grow, they have to grow uh, their business. Uh, that's why we are also talking about uh, uh, loan, get loan, because as my colleague uh, from uh, Equity Bell said, the mindset has to change. You can't work with the grant, grant and uh, grow. You have also to take big loan to and you have to think grow, uh, big and uh, uh, also take long. Yeah, uh, but at IFAD we have uh, the uh, sovereign operation where we provide uh, grants uh, to the government, but we also have uh, a unit on the private sector where we, we <coughs> work with uh, farmers but uh, in terms of uh, uh, financial products like uh, uh, financial institutions. Yes, uh, regarding the, the farmers, yes, uh, we invited uh, Mr. as a representative of the farmers. <laughs> Maybe uh, because it is well uh, addressed, it doesn't look like <laughs> farmers. <laughs> but next time, uh, this is not it, next time uh, we'll take a look of that. We'll bring some. The real, the real farmers. <laughs> I will pass the floor to uh, the Ufora and Tabita on uh, all the, the other questions related to uh, Thank you very much for the questions that are coming. Uh, maybe I could start with the saying we accept the comments which are coming. And uh, I want people to understand we are not forcing people to take loans from the males. Uh, the idea here is to make agriculture to be perceived as business. And we understand you cannot do the bigger investment using your own cost. So we need to make Africa sustainable in terms of food security. If you are aiming at making Africa to have self-sustainable in, uh, in terms of uh, food, we need to see ways on how we can increase the supply side of the food. And that's how we are going through to see how the bank can uh, facilitate the production, the increased production of food. So we are not just forcing 
We are saying if a farmer would increase production, he would have or she would have increased income from the, the excess produce made by using the loan. Although there are costs involved, but at the end of the day, we need to make the farmers understand all the costs that are involved and the, the lending costs to be built in the cost of production so that at the end of the day they be able to calculate or to see the gain that are coming through the support of the loans. And uh, some of the managing of the director of the company said the collective lending is not working. It is uh, for some level of farmers, yes, it is not working. But for smallholder farmers, we are talking here, uh, collective lending is working. Because it is difficult for them as an individual to get a loan directly from the bank. And we understand an individual farmer, if you want to look for a market, you have to gather products from several farmers collectively. So as bank, we are linking these farmers to the market. So processors, for example, they will need a certain times of produce from the farmers. And that can be linked through uh, organizing the farmers organizing the farmers through the groups. So we are seeing a group lending for small holder through the marketing cooperative. It is also somewhere we provide the solution to the small holder farmers. Thank you. Um, yeah. um, I would like to respond to the question regarding um, getting the farmers to a level of processing. One of the key things we need to remember is that with increased population, there's increased land fragmentation. And so the farmer who had 10 acres, there's inheritance of that land, and in the end it's divided all the way to a small piece of land. We have a joke in Kenya that now the price, the piece of land is just 50 by 100. What can you do on that piece of land? So that brings in the need for that collective um, group lending. However, you have to start somewhere. With the cooperatives, we have one example in Kenya where they now have um, come together, the cooperative has grown to the place where they have a milling plant. And that's through pooling of their resources, getting capacity built to the point now they can have a business plan, take it to the bank and get financing for a fully fledged processing plant that has, a, that has dryers, has a milling plant, has um, everything that you need for a processing plant. So we have to start somewhere, but let's not also forget the underlying factors. For the question on financing, uh, you'll allow me to give my CEO the mic for one minute so he can uh, respond. So I think what we've done on financing, and uh, I think last year we raised about $200 million across your businesses, is to leverage capital market instruments. So understand what capital providers, the language they speak, uh, look for money to employ some of them so that they can translate what we understand as opportunities into their language, and then find a way to structure the operations on the farming side so that we can deliver on that mandate. So we raise a lot of commercial papers and that goes to finance our farmers. Uh, I do agree that reducing the cost of funding is not a problem. Increase of productivity is actually the problem that needs to be solved. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, unfortunately, um, it is time uh, to wrap up the session and uh, close the, the, the session. Uh, but I know that uh, there are many uh, questions that were not answered, but we are there. Uh, during lunch, we can uh, meet. During the week, we are there. If you want to give up people, uh, equity bank, uh, uh, FX, uh, and the farmers, <laughs> we are there for the question. Uh, I'm going to um, invite uh, my colleague, Fan Rubio. Uh, with uh, the senior uh, investment officer at uh, IFAT to provide uh, <laughs> to provide the wrap up and thank you. I will be very brief. Uh, first thing I want to say is I am not a farmer. <laughs> I am a lowly IFAT UN bureaucrat, but 
very much focused on seeing how EFAT as an organization can support growth of pharma organizations and increase the access to finance. So that's why they invited me to come up. It's quite an honor for me to, to speak these final words given the very, very dynamic exchange that we've had during the session. So first of all, of course, the thanks to our organizers, SAFIN, Affix, and EFAD for this very, very interesting panel and for allowing me the opportunity to say just a few words. Um, I think really if we want to summarize the discussion, we can talk about what the key challenges have been, which I think have been discussed quite in depth and which I won't go into detail again. And then what maybe some of the solutions could be to some of those challenges. Um, for EFAT, it, particularly in the private sector, we're very much focused on trying to identify solutions to support agri SMEs and farm organizations. We recognize the importance of farm organizations in terms of aggregating small farmers and providing strong marketing um, opportunities for small farmers who are members of these farm organizations. A couple of things from our end that we're considering, first of all, and this came out of the discussion, all farm organizations are not eligible and should not be accessing finance. Clearly, there are certain profiles of farm organizations maybe that have been able to um, develop further in certain areas, such as leadership, which was mentioned, management skills and others, who might have capacity to be able to access finance, and finance not only from banks, but also from other private sector actors in their respective value chains, uh, such as downstream players, wholesalers, traders, upstream players such as input suppliers, which was also mentioned, and which also uh, aligns a bit with the FX approach. Um, so, looking a little bit at solutions, and trying to summarize a bit uh, what was said, and sorry I have my notes up here, but I can't remember everything that was discussed. At a high level, London finance is critical. We know that um, focusing on things like technical assistance, credit enhancements, can really incentivize and motivate access to finance. On the demand side, we know that supporting farm organizations in areas such as financial literacy, in management, in strengthening uh, capacity of farm organizations in terms of financial systems, uh, digitalizing, which was also discussed in depth during the session, these are all key areas of support that could strengthen farm organizations and offer them a greater opportunity for finance. And on the supply side, the financial players, whether it be banks, MFIs, second, third tier lending institutions or others, providing them the types of blended finance that can incentivize and motivate them to provide the appropriate products that farmers need, and this was also discussed in depth, products that address crop cycles, products that address cost of lending by providing more efficient digitalized services. So TA to sort of cater towards that area also would more than likely help to increase the flow of finance to farm organizations. Um, specifically here during the panel, there was a lot of talk about issues like farmer-led solutions, which I like that term a lot. And I think it's one that I'm gonna be using from now on. We talked about high interest rates. Again, I mentioned London Finance as an opportunity to maybe mitigate some of that. Distance uh, was mentioned as well as an issue. Ag tech solutions obviously are critical for that. Uh, M-Pesa, for example, I think was the one mentioned by FX specifically. So those kinds of digital applications, digital wallets could be interesting support in order to get further outreach with farm organizations and also in terms of developing a credit history. Collateral. Um, this one was controversial. I'd love to have a conversation with the gentleman on group lending because I think what he was saying was very interesting. Um, FX uses it as a tool in terms of mitigating risk. I know it's been used significantly in the microfinance industry in the past and very successfully. I'm curious to know about some of the challenges in the ag sector regarding that. Uh, and of course, creating market linkages. And uh, let me see if there's anything else. So um, one final comment in terms of change in mindset, I think was mentioned by either someone from the audience or here, but really this, this, this mindset of 
uh, grant funding, grant funding versus uh, a track record and a history uh, and an understanding that uh, things for free normally uh, aren't either sustainable uh, or um, you have to have value for your buck. So there has to be a culture that's developed in terms of repayment somehow, some way. Uh, especially if we want to increase access to finance using private sector funding, which in my view, given the incredible uh, gap between demand and supply of financing, is the only way in the future that that's going to be able to go. So we have to be thinking about solutions and ways to change mindset uh, across all different levels. And with that, uh, unfortunately, no one gets to ask me any questions. I will officially close this session. Thanks again, everyone, for EFAT. It's been a wonderful learning experience. And please feel free to reach out to me. I'm very approachable. Uh, I'm still learning a lot about farm organizations, and we're going to be working on it a lot. So any kinds of suggestions or recommendations are more than welcome. Thanks, and enjoy your next session. Thank you very much. Um, just a quick invitation. Please, please, also consider staying back for what's going on.